Right, part four, and we're talking about the rear axle today. The rear axle, really big, important section of any big power build, especially if, like me, your burnout game's strong. So what we did is we purchased a Ford nine inch rear axle. Well, it's a custom axle. This is built by Curry over in America. Uh, and they do like a nice aftermarket high performance axle. Now this one, I actually purchased from a hot rod shop in the UK and I bought it as the axle casing with the shafts um, for, for me to buy my own third member. If you're wondering what a third member is, it's the actual diff itself. So I purchased that and it was for an El Camino or a Chevelle or something like that. So it had axle saddles on it that we had to chop off. Um, and once we'd chopped the axle saddles off, I basically got some new saddles made up to sit on the original leaves. And we also made our own custom saddles to sit underneath that also hold the shockers. Um, the brake kit, I believe, came from somewhere called Speedway Motors. We had to modify quite a few bits of that. The way that the back plates mounted, we weren't massively happy with. But um, there was one massive flaw to this whole beautiful installation. The guy that I bought this axle off, I made the biggest mistake that we all make. Um, I went on Facebook Marketplace and there was somebody that was selling one of these axles locally. Uh, well, no, in the country, should I say, locally for this kind of stuff is up to 200 miles away, selling this axle. Uh, and he basically said, I think it was like 1,250 quid or something like that for the axle casing and the shafts. And I thought, you know what? That's a reasonable deal. By the time you've probably bought it from Curry and all the bits and pieces, it'll end up costing me more than that from America. So you know what? It's brand new. This guy builds hot rods. He knows what he's doing. Why not? What could possibly go wrong? Anyway, so we've come to get this axle after lots of other issues. We finally got it put together put the right axle shaft in, which seemed to be the right length, went in, no problem, engaged in the splines, went to put the left axle shaft in, and you'll notice there's a problem. So this is a limited slip diff, right? Limited slip diff. I'm turning the left shaft. <laughs> can you see the immediate issue there? Now let me turn the right shaft and see if you can, see if you can spot the obvious problem. <laughs> right, you ready? Watching this, I'm turning the right shaft. Yeah, that seems quite normal. <laughs> That's right. The left hand shaft turned out to be 50 mil too short. And the frustrating thing about this is we're now in 2021 and I purchased all this stuff in 2018. Well, anyway, I had the guy's number and I rang him up and I said, slight issue. I know it was a while ago since I bought this stuff. It's not been used, it's still brand new, but Slight problem, the shaft's too short. And he said, oh, don't worry about it. Yeah, no, no, it's, it's probably a mistake at the, at the Curry's end. They sell it as a complete kit. Anyway, I rang up Curry Enterprises who build these axles uh, and I got a really polite, pleasant, helpful guy on the phone and he helped me get it sorted. And he basically told me that the axles that I'd been supplied were never for this at all. And I'd kind of been sold, you know, a load of bits. Uh, obviously the reason he sold it was maybe that he couldn't make it work or whatever. Facebook Marketplace, buy it from the guy. If there's a main company that does it, buy it from there. We all know it's the right thing, but we all make the mistake, even when you're in the trade. Anyway, so Curry said they'll have a new axle made for me in two weeks, the right length, extra 50 mil, so I'm excited. And then that'll be the rear end finished. The tires can go back on and then the back body that's all nicely lacquered, we've got a new YZX flooring board in there that can go back on, which I'm really excited about. Running boards can go back on. What are you doing? I'm not losing my pen. <laughs> measuring for the cab. Uh, measuring for the Measuring for the bed. For the bed. Yeah. Because we don't want to drill that nice board in the wrong place. That'd be really gutting. But look, it's got a brake pedal, excitement. It's got brake discs and an axle and... <laughs> Don't drill it in the wrong place. Don't say that. Don't say that. <laughs> The 
Preparation for installation. Yeah. The bolt's too short. We've just got some temporary bolts because I didn't know what to buy for it and the bolt is too short. Story of my life. Right. So this thing, when it was all rotten, the bed was all rotten, those were actually just sat on there, I'm assuming. Yes. And because the wooden lats were just rotten. There was, there was nothing there, it just fell through. Look how weird the, the wheel arch is. It's like the, the front of the tire is touching the arc. Like the whole wheel's really far forward for some reason. I really don't understand what's going on with that. The axle is in the exact place the original was. I'm guessing the tires are just massive in comparison. Weird though, right, isn't it? I need to see pictures of the original, see where you're at. Because that does look drastically wrong. <laughs> It looks like it accelerated too fast and the wheel, Reverse. the axle moved forward a foot. Yeah, I'm not quite sure about that. There's something a bit suspicious going on there. And I don't like it. I don't like that. So what do we do? Move the axle back or just uh, squint more? Bring the wheel out forward? That probably would be the easier option. hole saw, not hole saw, <laughs> that'd be useless. <laughs> a 30 inch hole saw. Yeah. Wow, it actually starting to look like a vehicle underneath, that's amazing. Pity it's still only one wheel drive because we don't have the drive shaft yet. So the bed needs to go, yeah, towards you by maybe an inch. You know what an inch is? I do. You know what an inch is, don't you English boy? <laughs> yeah, I'd say that's, that's an inch. that was a good inch. <laughs> that's all I've got. Yeah. Yes. So, okay, that's fine. That's fine. There's not really a great deal more we can do with that. So, there's so much bizarre going on there with the, the fact that the wheel's really far back. I need to show this because, like, on camera, it won't, you won't have really shown that the wheel's far back, but. You're better off this side, I think. Yeah. So this is the problem. <laughs> the axle is in exactly the same place that the old one came off because the spring has got like a little nipple on it that centers it. And the springs were marked left and right. So I'm just, I am going to double check that the spring hasn't been put on backwards or anything silly like that. But that definitely doesn't look right to me. Right, so what we ended up doing is the axle saddle had three holes in it on the pad that's mounted to the axle and they were all an inch apart and we were in the middle. So we've moved the axle back one hole, which is fine. There was enough length in everything. There was enough movement in the shocker and the, the top arm, the, like the V-frame, had an adjust, had adjusters so we could move that back. The only thing that needed actual modification was the bottom spring uh, where the U-bolt, the spring perch that the U-bolts go through, the kind of the cap that fastens to the shockers. So that just needed its hole drilling an inch further back. So not too complicated. However, the trusty old pedestal drill that I had, that I acquired when I bought a house, it came free with the house, the buttons died, so it won't stay in. So I literally have to have an assistant to press the button in. Yeah, it's, it's, it's been one of those months. It's been one of those months. So, <laughs> I'm the trusty old pedal. <laughs> I've employed this man to push the button. Mm. <laughs> He's very, very good at it. I'm foreign. <laughs> yep, let's do it. This is where it rips my hand off, isn't it? It's an absolutely massive drill bit. Oh, I'm scared. <laughs> I'm scared. <laughs> I need a clamp on it, don't Do you I? Want me to do it no. No, no, I'm, I'll All right, slack lamp it, yeah. It's good, you know, like when you just, uh, you, yeah. yeah. 
Nine times out of ten I'll do it and it'll be fine, but you know, this time I'll do it and it'll on camera swing around and chop my finger off. It'd make good video, but I won't get that truck ever finished then, will I? Whoever knew that you needed two people on the pedestal drill, it's a, yeah. CNC machine would make nice work of it, but don't have time for, oh, I can do it like one-handed now, can't I? Oh, you're fired. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, that worked quite nicely. I did a good job of sharpening that drill, if I don't say so for myself. <laughs> right, I'm going to sham for that, count it with a count sink, just to make it look nice. Take the masking tape off, and then that can go back on. Where's the other one? Oh, it's there. And I'm going to repeat the process on this one. Right, so that's the 16 mil holes put in there. I'm going to just chamfer that with a drill. And then, we're Romeo done on them, it can go back together. And you can see, if you look, it is, it is better. It is, instead of it actually being under the arch, it's kind of like level with it, so it's better. And it has meant that we haven't had to physically chop anything. Obviously the suspension's fully drooped, so it looks even worse at the minute. It's moved even further forward, but yeah. That's what we're gonna try, we're gonna try it. See, see what happens. Let's do the easy thing first. Oh wow. So, can't really see it very clearly from here, but running boards and bed on the chassis. It's very exciting. It's going back together. Reassembly. Hooray! And the axle's been moved back. As you can see, it's been moved back. So now I'm quite confident that that's, that's going to be okay. I'm happy with that. The annoying thing is I'm going to have to have the prop shaft lengthened. Oh well, never mind. <laughs>